Kyrie Irving out of the lineup for the Brooklyn Nets for a second straight game due to personal reasons. Nets taking on the Grizzlies under five minutes left in the first. Grizzlies up one. Brandon Clark driving in, gets a floater to go. Under four minutes left in the first. Grizzlies up by three. It's Clark again. Shout out Canada. Gets yeah. out one to go from deep. Good country. That's yeah, decent, isn't it? Uh, Canada. <laughs> Canada. Grizzlies up six. <laughs> So you got me all patriotic. There be a team in Canada. You got, yeah, you got me patriotic here. Yeah. Uh, Grizzlies 40 points in that first quarter. Second quarter, Jonas Valanciunas has to exit the game. Look at the bench there. That's the last we would see of him. He would not return due to the NBA's health and safety protocol, but did not test positive for COVID-19. So for four minutes to go in the third, Nets down four. Karis LeVert, this dude stepped up. In the absence of Katie and Kyrie, he was balling. Nets down one. Over two minutes left in the third. Nets still down one. Joe Harris to Levert. Hot hand. Feed him. About 30 seconds later, Nets down one. Levert. Step back three. Hit 19 points in the third quarter alone. Fourth now. 3.30 to go. Game tied. And it's Clark. Going to get the uh, finger roll to go right there. He had 21 points, 8 rebounds. Under a minute later, same score, Brooks. Another Canadian. Chris is up four. And then it's Melton. Hitting the three. The Grizzlies winning 115-110. Karis LeVert, 43.6 assists, not enough. Hard to replace the production of KD and Kyrie. And this is the third game that the Nets have played without those two this season. It's also their second loss in that situation. Both losses have come against the Grizzlies. Brooklyn, 4-3 and three against everyone else. So when Duran and Irving are active, the Nets outscoring teams by an average of about 10 points per game. When they're both out, the differential, just plus one per game. But they're still... Listen, here's the sad part about all of this. <clears throat> Kyrie Irving is a really good dude. I went off last week about him. The media is always at fault. I meant every damn word I said. Um, somebody who's very close to him, that's family, is, is Rod Strickland, former NBA player. Max, you know, you know, you know Rod, you know his reputation. Uh, he was a star in New York City, one of the great, great guards uh, in New York City history. Starred at the Paul, came to the Knicks, and played in the Wizards and various other like Portland and other. Rod was the man. Well, Rod's the man. Rod's been my brother for many, many years. I love Rod, and Rod obviously uh, vehemently defended. Uh, 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 Kyrie in, in, in terms of feeling like he's been victimized by the media and things of that nature. So I'm going to guard what I say because I have such respect and love for Rod uh, that I want to make sure that I'm very, very clear and not incendiary with my words. Kyrie Irving is a good dude. Kyrie Irving, Kyrie Irving is very uh, uh, philanthropic. He's very charitable. Uh, you know, the 250,000 meals that he gave out uh, to folks during the coronavirus pandemic, particularly early on, the money that he's dedicated, et cetera, et cetera. We all know how special Kyrie can be in terms of where his heart lies. And there's no debate in that about Kevin Durant either. When you research it, you see some of the things he's done in his community. Here's the issue where disaster is in their wake. Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant are relatively sensitive dudes when it really, really comes to the media and some of the things the media may have to say and things of that nature. And you choose the media capital of the world? you in Brooklyn. It's not just about basketball. It's about the things you say. It's about the things you do. It's how you project yourself and the imagery that comes with it. And putting yourself in this line of fire, yeah, you're going to get fined all the time and all of this stuff, but calling the media peons and stuff like that, you're just asking for trouble. And you're asking to be distracted. And neither of them have the patience to be distracted by anybody. And so when you do that, particularly in the media capital of the world, sure, that's going to put more of an onus of winning on your shoulders. But it's going to give people the license to further dissect every little thing you do. And as a result, you're not going to have the level of peace and the freedom, as Kevin Durant once said, to just play ball, let us hoop. Folks are not going to give you that. And as a result, that's where the recipe of disaster comes in. Because with Kyrie calling the media peons and talking about he's not going to talk to them, all right, they're going to talk to Durant. 
they're going to ask Durant about Kyrie. They're going to call, call to Levert and, right. and Dinwiddie and all of this and ask them about Kyrie. It's going to be a headache. That's what I foresee. I hope I'm wrong. I agree. I don't think it's going to be a disaster, though. I don't think they're going to win the championship, and I don't know that they get out of the East. That depends on how much KD has after the surgery, uh, you know, after the injury. Although he looked pretty good, he looked pretty smooth, you know, and and he's getting back, and he'll look better and better. Um, so gee, and that'll really determine whether it's a disaster or not, right? Uh, but I, I have some comments about Kyrie's comments. First of all. Kyrie's rich enough to pay $25,000 fine for not talking to the media. That's his prerogative. And a lot of people get angry yeah, behind that, right? I agree. I, not me. Not me. He's rich enough to do it. That's his, that's his business if he wants to do it. But I do want to mention, I, I do want to comment upon, about his comments calling the media pawns, okay? Um, first of all, I agree with what you said, and I've made that point. You're pushing it on your teammates like KD. That's not leadership. You're not leading. But in terms of calling the media pawns, I'll just speak for myself. Kyrie, you calling me a pawn? For whom? Are you saying for my corporate paymasters, for ESPN or Disney? Because when Colin Kaepernick kneeled, what did I do, Stephen A? I supported him the entire time against the NFL. It's a business partner of ours. Or when Daryl Morey made the comments about China and uh, people were scared to say anything about China. I, I mentioned on this show, uh, does China have such influence we can't say repressive communist governments are bad anymore? Right? Came out and said it. Um, um, during the Black Lives Matter movement, et cetera, et cetera. I've never been scared to speak my mind. Now, I do have corporate paymasters. No question about it. So do you, Kyrie. So do you. And, and in so, do you believe that, that the media are pawns in the sense that we are, um, we are carrying out some corporate agenda? Well, yeah, we love basketball. We love watching basketball. We love making money, talking about people wat you know, watching basketball, just like you love making money and it gives you a platform playing basketball. So Stephen A., when I hear him use language like that, sort of kind of tangentially to your point, it seems like he is um, positioning himself as an, as, or positioning the media as the enemy. It's not going to do him any favors, as you mentioned, in the media capital of the world. By paying the fine and not talking, he's not doing his teammates any favors. And at a certain point, Kyrie, you have to ask yourself, why is it that teams that you are on have underachieved? Yes, the Cavs did win a championship. But I mean, Boston, Brooklyn, there are teams you've been on with a lot of talent where their one loss record goes down when you're on it. That should never happen. You may be the most skilled player who ever lived. You're certainly in that conversation and one of the most talented players of all time and I think the best show in the NBA and arguably in sports. That should never happen that a team doesn't get better with you on it and yet that has happened. At a certain point, you have to look in the mirror and ask yourself about your own behavior. In the end, what it comes down to, guys, last point, what it comes down to is this. He doesn't, he doesn't have to talk to the media if he doesn't want to, particularly if he's willing to pay the fines. Uh, he's, and, and, and I'm not encouraging him to do so. He can do what he wants to do. But in the end, when you talk about all of these things that have nothing to do with basketball, last time I checked, what people ask you about is basketball. And so you being averse to answering questions about your job that you perform in front of millions every night is a bit... Is, is, is a bit befuddling, it's confusing, but it's his prerogative. I wish him nothing but the best.